Hi, everyone. This is Immigration Lawyer John Fesravi. Welcome to the Immigration Lawyers Podcast. We're doing a service provider edition with Marco Scanu, who's been here on the show before. Uh, he's the owner and president of VisaBusinessPlans.com, providing business plans for you know L1s, E2s, EB5s, all that kind of stuff. But a lot more we're going to discuss today uh, which is much more broad than that kind of expert ladder services and other kind of stuff. So uh, just to start, Marco, happy new year. Thanks for coming on the show again. Well, happy new year. And thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. So uh, how are things going on in the business plan world? So, and, and the rest of your expansions that you're doing, but what kind of things have you been seeing in dealing with USCIS and, and the embassies uh, in regard to business plans? Okay, great question. As you know, I've been active in the immigration world uh, in the U.S. for almost 13 years, so it's it's been an interesting ride. And of course, it's been challenging um, dealing with um, you know many cases where U.S. consulates and, and embassies are closed. So one of the trends that uh, we've been dealing with is a lot of uh, cases being let's say E2s. Yeah. change of the status. I know that many attorneys are not comfortable with the risk level behind the change of the status, but uh, you know, doing a change of the status creates, um, you know, it's very own set of, um, I'm not gonna say challenges, but uh, realities that we need to deal with. The main one being, being for example, E2s, just to, to use an example, the, uh, the adjudication criteria, um, that we've seen, you know, we've, I mean, we've seen it before, we had seen it before, but doing so many cases for change of the status, we're kind of seeing uh, uh, certain trends. And the main one is how each two business plans are being reviewed with the higher level of scrutiny. Yeah. In some cases, you know, we've been hired to write a business plan for a case that Maybe it was presented with really basic business plan, but then the language of the RFE, you know, it looks like an EB5 case. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, that, that type of thing. So we're seeing that challenge across the board with, again, change of the status. That's one thing. Uh, we've been doing more and more of, uh, which I find really interesting because I love finding solutions to complex problems. It's kind of in my mindset and my team's uh, kind of uh, way of doing things. A lot of expert opinion letters. And just to share a few examples with you, we, we did a few months back, um, you know, an expert opinion letter for, um, it was an A2 renewal. And the challenge was that the, the, U, the E2 company was bleeding money. They were losing a lot of money. So the US CIS came back saying, hey, we have a problem here with marginality. Okay, how come, how can you run this company and be able to make sufficient income if this company is bleeding you know, money? So, um, you know, we put together the expert opinion letter saying, look, um, an enterprise that does not have the capacity to generate you know, such income, um, but has the present or future capacity to make a significant economic contribution mm -hmm. is not considered a marginal enterprise. Of course, I'm not an immigration attorney and with the, um, the letter in coordination with the immigration attorney, but that's where we came in and do this, did this whole analysis to highlight in detail all the significant economic contribution, beginning with how many jobs have been created over the last five years, yeah. direct, indirect, total payments, salaries, um, payment through vendors, $1.4 million, and then direct, indirect, and Indus jobs that were created. Mm -hmm. The end result was the visa was approved. So uh, that was an interesting case. Um, then we uh, recently did one for, uh, you know, the company has sponsored someone that uh, the company needed to prove its ability to pay the wage. So we came in with our background in finance and did not only an analysis 
of the last two financial statements, but the projections based on industry trends, industry benchmark to show that the company was, you know, more than capable of, uh, of, of paying uh, the wage, the preferred the, wage. The, the, so, that yeah. issue would be the kiss of death in certain cases. You know, you get that and you're like, you don't have the income right now to pay for it. Uh, no, but like you could you kind of break down it with financial statements to show that um, when the person starts working, it gets the employment that they'll have the ability to pay. Exactly, because you know, we've, right. we've even done, right now, even if, yeah. We've done cases for companies that, for example, and it's it's in case law, uh, companies that have been investing heavily in, in research and development. So you look at the financial statement and look, this company is losing money. But once you analyze the financial statements and, and kind of translate the statement into layman's language and, and point out why the company can really or has the ability to pay, and again, that along with projections, again, the key lies in using industry and standards and of course being creative, finding the solution. But yes, that, that was another interesting case. Wow, so you guys are broader than business plans. It kind of falls in the rubric of business plan, especially with projections, but um, it's good to know that it, it's an umbrella service. You guys do more nuanced kind of stuff as well. Exactly, that that has been kind of the direction that we have been um, taking you know for the, nat- the the last few years. Um, how how they, it, it's how your clients know that you do that kind of service? Like, did they get an RFE and then you guys mentioned, hey, we do we do that, or is it just always? How how do they know that you do that as well? In addition to just the basic business plan, with regards to you know letters and stuff. You know, it's an interesting question. We've been offering those services for years. Maybe in their website is kind of hidden, but you know, through all the network of, of immigration attorneys who trust us, um, especially the attorneys that have been working with us for years, they they know that, you know, once they have, you know, an RFE and, and anything in that RFE has to do with business, finances, and so on, mm-hmm. uh, we'll always be, black, be glad to take the time to analyze the RFE from a business perspective and, you know, try to come up with creative solutions. And 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 so it's it's a service that's been growing with, uh, again, many attorneys who have trusted us for years. So it's uh, it's it's been an interesting ride. It's very interesting. Yeah, there's just, immigration has so many different aspects and so many different things you need. And, and it's so good to have different, you know, uh, a vendor industry develop around it to help support this stuff. If some lawyers get overwhelmed, they try to do it the business plan themselves, write these letters themselves. It's like, no, just give it to someone who knows what they're doing, who has <laughs> specialty in this. doesn't make any sense to, to jump into these uh, these areas uh, where they don't need to. Exactly, exactly. It's it's about, you know, specialization and, and, and the more you, you do of certain cases and certain, you know, um, types of, of projects, you know, the, the better you get at it. Um, Another area that um, we've been very active uh, for the last few years that has been growing more and more, I would say for the last maybe six to 12 months, it's uh, the NIW space. Yeah. So um, again, we, we pride ourselves in providing super customized solutions, beginning with really short impact analysis reports when again, we're hired because you know there's this big, huge RFE and nasty RFE challenging everything. Yeah. So one of the key areas that we, we concentrate on is is number one explaining in easy to understand language what the proposed endeavor is. Sometimes you know you have clients that have these really complex proposed endeavors and areas and industries. I think we've I think that we're good at really taking that and explaining it in, in a way that a five-year-old would understand it, number one. And second, doing the research to answer what I like to call the $1 million question. Why, why exactly is it your proposed endeavor going to address a matter of national interest? So we provide a lot of research that you know, certain law firms outsource or find that again, since we've, do, we've been doing this for a while, 
we now we know how to build a solid document that will answer the key questions that again uh, help them address uh, our fees. So, yeah, so now should just waiver one of the, the, the first starting point is like, how is this going to affect the national scope? Because sometimes people have certain jobs that may affect a city or a school or something, but how is it going to affect all of America? And you got to get past that first hurdle first before they even look at the rest. Uh, so it's really key to be able to properly explain that. And it's a big problem. I see these appeals. I read these appeals where people get just the fail the case immediately right there and not able to prove how it's national scope. And sometimes and I read it, I'm like, what's well, kind of, I, I feel I understand why it's national scope, but uh, it, it seems like the person didn't explain it in a way that the adjudicator would be comfortable with. And that's a, its own thing. Exactly. Look, it's all about the audience, John. It, it's all about putting ourselves in the shoes of, okay, who's reading this? Mm -hmm. What is the attention span of this person? And yeah. how many minutes do they have to? View the case and, may, and, and, and and go next case. So it's and 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 we also believe in writing documents that are even interesting to read mm -hmm. that can capture their attention because they're sitting there all day long reading case. I mean, if you're an adjudication officer, I don't want to think how they feel Friday afternoon, 4 p.m. Yeah. They're reading hundreds of, of packages. Huge packages. I mean, they would be a thousand pages, like. It's just overwhelming to even see that. Like, oh, I got to flip through this. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So we like to think that when they read our, our, our work product, they go, okay, fi finally someone took the time to explain things in a way that I understand it and then th that my five-year-old will understand. Yeah. <laughs> quickly, yeah. Just really yes. Quickly. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, these are, you know, immigration practitioners putting aside using your services, just it's really good to focus on that because I, I read lawyers writings that they just go on and on and on. It's like, you know, you just got to talk the main talking points and that's going to sell better than talking everything in a million details because as human beings, like your eyes are just going to scroll over it and not catch it. And we see this a lot. Like um, I, I had this habit in L ones where I like, because they keep RFU on everything. So I just put everything in there and it started working where I get approvals. Then I started getting RFEs where they wouldn't, there's so much information they couldn't even find it in there. And I realized I got to have a cover letter, succinct business plan, really the, the main talking points where they usually uh, get on us, make sure those are highlighted and those are big. So they can just flip through it and, and see the key points they need. And they have the evidence that's hundreds of pages on the side, but uh, having someone who's got the skill has done it enough to be able to go down to the, what's important without overwhelming the person reading it is just a critical uh, skill. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I bring, you know, my, my perspective from, you know, more than 35 years of experience in the business world and finance, you know, the elevator pitch. So if I have to be able to, in 30 seconds, clearly convey and articulate what exactly that I'm going to, what exactly I'm going to be doing and what is the value that I bring to the table and what is the problem that, that I'm going to solve. 30 seconds. I mean, that makes a huge difference. Then yes, you can add a thousand pages, but if you can convey that really quick, that in my perspective makes a huge difference. I hear you, I hear you, definitely that's the case. So, uh, you know, kind of a big question, what are your plans for 2022, not just for business or personal life? Do you have any, I don't like New Year's resolutions, but is there any like uh, planning, game plan for Q4, where you wanna be? Uh, anything interesting you can share with clients and how you got to thinking that's important so they could also use it in their daily lives? Great question. But first and foremost, we're big believers in educating our clients. And so we, we're spending more and more time and resources, you know, educating them on uh, going back to business plans. I mean, what exactly is an immigration business plan and then why and how is it different from any other type of business plan? So yeah. education is at the top of the list and, and that, is a concept that we translate to team members. The more team members are trained, uh, the you know the better that the job is going to be. So yeah. we're big believers in, in that, and um, we're constantly training our, our staff members. We have weekly sessions where we are covering specific topics, answering questions. So education, getting educated ourselves on new trends and and and, yeah. and what's going on out there, and that is something that we accomplish by having these type of conversations and speaking with immigration attorneys and learning what's going on. And look, I think that it's equally important to be able to 
be more efficient and uh, to have more time to enjoy with uh, you know family and friends. That's yeah, that's important. what my plan is. I'm getting more focused on tracking the time I'm doing and my associates doing. So uh, if it's time that we could you know figure out a way to either electronically do it or digitally or have an extra staff member do it to distribute the hours better. Um, Cause there's no point working all this much, not being able to enjoy it or just kind of relaxing a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Now you're headquartered in Florida. Is that right? Yes. We're based in Miami, Florida. Yes. Wonderful. So, I mean, I, I see all the New Yorkers, East coast people fly down to the area at this time of year when it's freezing in the, in the Northeast. Uh, and you guys are having a good time there uh, <laughs> here in Los Angeles. It's pretty warm. It's hot and cold, but it's, it's similar to you guys where it's usually nice weather. Yes, uh, you guys have a you know nicer weather, more predictable and drier for sure. And yeah, the humidity oof, is, is out of control. <laughs> oh yes, most definitely. A lot, you know, Miami is a different world. As I like to say to tell my clients, the good thing about Miami is that it is very close to the United States. So, <laughs> <laughs> we're right there at the border. <laughs> we, we hear a lot about people moving to Texas and into Florida and Miami in particular. Like, have you seen the? The, the population demographic changes in the last year or two with people moving there is it has it noticeable in your personal life oh yes yes indeed indeed it has it's just been i mean going from you know the where i live in the neighborhood and my daughter's school you see different crowds you see a lot of people from you know from from the northeast new york um you know massachusetts and so on so yeah we're seeing it Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because, you know, Florida is one of those swing states that has all this stuff with this influx of population. Which direction is going to go? How are they going to think? What's happening to the tax base? It's going to be, Florida is going to be changing a lot uh, in the next, you know, five years, probably. Huge changes. Yes, yes. Uh, we also anticipate that. But it's always an interesting and exciting place to be. Yeah. For well, sure. Marco, it's good speaking with you again. Uh, VisaBusinessPlans.com is the place to go. Uh, obviously, you have all those additional services. So there's a tab on your website where for immigration lawyers, and you kind of list uh, what what kind of stuff you do. They can always reach out Correct. to you, and if they have questions or something that's not even on there, maybe you guys work it out. Because I'm sure it, when it comes to business planning and finance and projection, that kind of stuff, uh, it, it just professional services in that area. You're the person to go to. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I'm always glad to jump on a quick call with uh, an attorney who has questions, has a case. Have you guys? You know, it's a question that attorneys usually ask, have you guys dealt with this type of case? Or not? yeah, I'll be glad always to brainstorm and again, find solutions. We're here to help attorneys win cases. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, Marco. So everyone, uh, the website, visabusinessplans.com is the place to go to spell just like it sounds. Thanks again, Marco. We'll be talking soon. We'll be talking soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.